Hi, welcome to another re review by George. Today's review is on the Gerber Applegate fighting knife. Now, as you can see, as usual, um, I've listed all the ratings as well as the specifications for this knife. So if you have to, you can always look at this page and uh, see um, the overview of the knife. But meanwhile, I will move on to the positive and negatives about this knife. Before I go on with the review, I'd like to just to share a little bit of history about, uh, about me and this knife. Um, actually, the first time I heard of this knife, I was about 15 years old. Um, I saw this knife in the Gerber catalog. Um, and uh, it was just amazing because the knife sort of looked like it's a spear tipped knife and it was a folder version. So at that, at that time, I didn't really know anything about um, knife companies or once forever, really. So I saw this, um, this signature on the blade and I was thinking whoever designed this knife had designed his name on it. Um, it must be pretty good design or else this guy's big, making a big mistake. So some, I think, almost 10, 15 years later, I finally got this knife, and um, I find it quite uh, quite a very well designed knife. And I say, I say to this guy, Colonel Applegate, he's really done it. It's pretty very well designed knife for uh, defense use. So what do I know about this knife? Here's the summary. Uh, the positives. Let's let's start with the positives. So for a start, it's a very large and comfortable handle. You probably have already found out in my other reviews that I like a knife with a big handle than a small one. Um, I think a big handle, you have more leverage. You can, you can use it for being a bigger ta uh, doing bigger tasks. So this knife ha definitely has a very big handle. Um, and it's reasonably comfortable. It's very grippy, this texture here. And um, it's just really nice. I believe this knife was designed based on another design by the same guy. Um, originally they had a fixed blade version of this knife and now they developed, I mean 15 years ago or so, they developed this um, folding version of the knife. Okay, enough of that. Um, so the blade is also very big. As you can see it's all Longer, about a bit longer than the four four inches long, and it's a spear tip, so it's reasonably strong and it's very thick. And also, um, he designed the knife to be a spear tip, which is usually not done for a folding knife because if you do sharpen the the top swedge, um, usually what other folding knives would have trouble is that the user may cut their hands when the knife is closed. However, this knife here was designed in such a manner that the handle just covers up this uh, swedge. So even should you choose to sharpen the swedge and make it very lethal, this knife will protect you from cutting yourself. Okay, so that's a number one very, very important design. Um, improvement over other folders. Now, another thing is um, it's got a very strong liner lock um, as you can see. I think this is a over over one millimeter thick so the liner is very solid. On top of that um, the, the designer had also put a, a secondary locking mechanism here which is a pretty much a metal sheet, I believe probably a steel sheet. So if you do want the secondary safety, slide it in. You slide this bit in and um, that will cushion the lock. So should you ever engage the knife in combat so hard that the liner try to slide back to its closed position it will encounter more force. 
So that's another improvement of this knife over many other liner lock designs. Now, um, there's a there's a full stainless steel um, stainless steel liner inside of the knife. I'll show you in a second. Now that's also another thing that makes this knife a very strong knife, as you can see from the reflection there. Um, see, it covers the entire surface, just about the entire surface inside the handle. So the stainless steel liner is very thick. So um, that will certainly make this knife a very strong knife. Although I would discuss about the, the negatives about the, the steel liner later on. Um, now for deployment, this knife, a four inches long, uh, a bit longer than four inches long knife, actually deploys quite fast. So I think that's probably due to the kind of uh, washer they, they use inside, but um, I didn't really open the knife, so you can't quite see it. Apologies, but I can guarantee you this knife opens much faster than you'd expect some knife of the same size. Um, so that's also a very good thing. There's still uh, dual thumb stud, which is also uh, doubling as a blade stopper. So once the knife rotates into the closed position, once it rotates into the closed position, they ultimately stop the knife blade from sliding any further toward that side. So in a way that uh, makes this knife a little bit weight efficient, though it won't be as weight efficient as say a knife with a thumb hole, which um, would save more weight by cutting more material from the blade as well as not having the thumb stat, but that's not really quite the question here. Now, um, the knife sheath, sorry, here's the knife sheath, which um, is a nylon sheath with two different kind of carrying options. You can either carry it in your belt in such manner or um, in this manner. I think maybe in this manner it will be more concealable put your belt through here. So, it's also a very, uh, very nice sheet. Comes with the knife, by the way. Now, um, comes down to the negative points. I think there's certainly a few things I can say, but um, gotta keep in mind, um, overall I think it's a very excellent knife. Um, I'm kind of trying to split the hair here just to make Make um, make some of the viewers aware of the negative points because some things may not matter so much to me, but they do matter to other people. For a start, um, there's actually a bit of a jimping on the back of the blade. Um, if I look at it closely, the jimping shape kind of goes in a very round manner. So, what does it mean? It just means that it's not a super aggressive jimping, um, especially comparing with some companies like Spyderco, they do very good jimpings. So this is, uh, to me, the jimping here kind of feels like a, a thumb rest, just a place where you can rest your thumb when you do cut something using this knife. Um, so it's not super aggressive. So and as well as uh, not having the not having a, a thumb ramp, um, I think if you do sharpen this bit of the knife, you're gonna be very careful using this knife to cut anything. Because if you do sort of push this knife toward an object, you may go in and um, cut your thumb. So that's one thing that's not super great about this knife, but I think it probably matters not so much because it's essentially 
at the end of the day, it's a defensive knife. It, um, it's not really ideal for utility use. But I think they sort of try to give you that option. Okay. Now, um, as I already showed you, the steel liners here, you can see it's probably mirror polished on each side. Um, you can you kind of see it's it's completely solid, and uh, there's no cutouts to um, reduce the weight. I think they should certainly have thought about it um, to to cut some weight off this um, this knife because at the end of the day it um, it weighs about. 6.3 ohms, so that's quite a lot. Um, comparing with a Spyderco Police 3 G10 model, which I think is a very similar size than knife, and they weigh a bit less. Now, um, also another thing is the serration here. It's not really. I don't. I don't think you really you should find much use out of it. It's um, if you cut nylon or or fabric with it that could come in use, but um, in a way the serration placed here limits you from uh, from using it as a utility or uh, a cutting knife really, because um, just in my experience I would um, cut something, say wood stick with this portion of the knife, and then right now it becomes serration. So, so I think it limits the knife from being used as anything else except a defensive knife. Now, um, another thing is there's no any other options for carrying this knife except uh, tip down. So, I mean, putting it in your pant pockets is kind of inconvenient in my opinion. So that's another thing. Um, a little bit rough on the back of this handle here. You can see uh, the back spacer here is a little bit higher than the handle. So that's a little bit, they could round it up a little. And also um, on the back of the the handle here, they could also have rounded up the, the FRN inside which kind of cuts, cuts you a little bit, but really uh, that's a very minor issue. It, uh, it certainly feels very good. Now, uh, another couple of points I made was uh, based on my speculation, so it may not be true. So number one, I, um, I've actually, um, not a whole lot of sources tell you what blade the, the Gerber is, the Gerber Applegate knife is actually made of. Um, I've actually somehow managed to find it on a website which they were selling this knife from. Um, they claimed that the knife was made of the 425 modified stainless steel. Um, I had a look at it on the data sheet. Um, it says 13.5% chromium and 0.55% of carbon. In my opinion, I'm not a material engineer, but 0.55% carbon isn't really a whole lot to be called a, a high carbon stainless steel, especially comparing with anything in the market nowadays, like S30V or G or, or VG10. But uh, I understand it's probably just very similar to your standard 420 series stainless steel. So it's a very pretty average stainless steel, really. So. Um, I don't really complain about the edge retention. I think this knife should not have so much uh, opportunity to, to encounter cutting tasks. But in terms of rust resistibility, I certainly would like uh, something like at least a 440C stainless steel, just to be sure. Another thing, uh, it's a modified version of a fixed blade knife. so. It definitely kind of see it's very straight so should you make a thrust attack with it you got to kind of make sure you are gripping the, the knife very hard um, texture wise it's pretty alright running out of time I'll make another short video